When China's electric vehicle industry became a global news hotspot, the leading enterprise BYD was focused on by Western media. BYD's electric vehicles have won the Chinese market with their low prices and excellent quality, and are also exported to other countries in large quantities. BYD is not only the company with the highest sales of electric vehicles in the world, but also the world's second largest power battery supplier and China's largest electronic product foundry, manufacturing for mobile phone brands such as Huawei and Xiaomi. What's more outrageous is that it also has its own chip factory. It is said that BYD cars can be manufactured by itself except for tires and glass. Such a company naturally makes competitors tremble. If you look deeper, you will find that, like Huawei, BYD's headquarters is also in Shenzhen. Yes, Huawei originated from Bantian Street in Shenzhen, while BYD is located in Pingshan New District. Shenzhen City has not only cultivated Huawei and BYD, but also cultivated another company that has swept the world, DJI. Not only in the hardware field, Shenzhen also has Tencent, China's largest software company, which has many star products such as WeChat and QQ. Tencent is also the world's largest game company. In fact, Shenzhen also has many well-known companies in various fields. This makes Shenzhen the third largest city in China after Beijing and Shanghai, and its GDP even exceeds that of Hong Kong. And this city, 40 years ago, was still a small fishing village. It can be said that the development history of Shenzhen is the epitome of China's rise. Unlike traditional central cities such as Beijing, Shanghai and Guangzhou, the fundamental reason why Shenzhen was set up as a special economic zone is that it is close to Hong Kong. And the central government thinks it is conducive to attracting Hong Kong businessmen. At the same time, the Chinese government also set up three special economic zones in Xiamen, Zhuhai, and Shantou. Shenzhen's starting point is the lowest among the four special economic zones, but in the end, only Shenzhen has developed into a first tier city. Since Shenzhen is mainly based on agriculture and fisheries, the population is sparse. So after the establishment of the Shenzhen Special Economic Zone, a large number of people from all over the country poured into Shenzhen. Because at that time, China's reform and opening up had just begun, and many local governments were still implementing a planned economy, holding a conservative attitude towards economic innovation, and even cracking down on it as a crime. For those who are open-minded and dream of innovation, the best way is to go to special economic zones such as Shenzhen to make a living. These outsiders drag large and small bags and used all their money to buy a one-way ticket to Shenzhen. If they failed, they would not even have the money to return to their hometown. And Shenzhen, with its openness and tolerance, accepted them. Unlike Guangzhou, Hong Kong and other cities in the Pearl River Delta where Cantonese is widely spoken, Shenzhen has been using Mandarin since the beginning because most of the population is from outside. The threshold for integration into Shenzhen is much lower than that of other cities. And these new immigrants in Shenzhen, the rich ones open factories and run businesses. People at the bottom enter factories to produce goods such as clothes, shoes, toys, or work as waiters and set up stalls. Working more than 10 hours a day is the norm. Most people leave their families and live alone, and work is all they have in life. In short, as long as you are willing to work, you can get a meal in Shenzhen. There is no retreat in the dictionary of Shenzhen people. If they succeed, they can send money to their relatives in their hometown to build a house, or take them to Shenzhen. If they fail, even if they return to their hometown, they cannot adapt to the backward lifestyle there. Therefore, Shenzhen people have no other way except success. And such a background has also created a fierce sense of competition among Shenzhen people. Only by moving forward bravely can they win a glimmer of hope. The winner takes all, and the loser return to the production line to tighten the screws. The whole Shenzhen is a living battle royale game, where the fittest survive. Tears are a symbol of weakness, and Shenzhen does not need weakness. Due to the rapid economic development, 
everyone has the opportunity to get rich. For example, the first batch of people who set up stalls to sell snacks made money, and they could open restaurants and complete class leap. Most of the first batch of workers who came down from the production line and opened their own workshops also had their own factories. Because of fierce competition, it is common for companies to hurt each other. So trust is a naive performance, and self-control is a compulsory course for Shenzhen companies. The backward foundation and lack of funds are the natural disadvantages of Chinese companies. Many Western parts are simply unaffordable to Chinese people. Then they can only produce them themselves. In fact, Huawei, BYD, and other companies do not want to buy Western products or parts, but they really can't afford them and can only make them themselves. Providing affordable products and services to Chinese people has become a huge business opportunity for Chinese companies. Huawei, BYD, and other Shenzhen companies started in this way. Their early products were all poor imitations, and they were not easy to use. But they did achieve low prices, and low prices can open up the market. People who buy Chinese products will not compare them with Japanese and American products. What they want is low prices. However, China is a huge emerging market. Once a company takes the lead in its own field, it can not only occupy the Shenzhen market, but also quickly cover the whole country. No matter how low the product is, it can also bring a lot of profits to the company. Support the company to invest in research and development and upgrade products. The role of the Shenzhen municipal government is to provide escort services for an enterprise when it has formed a certain market advantage and developed to a certain scale, and help these enterprises in areas such as financing and land use, so that they can grow and develop, go to the whole country, and go to the world, and then enjoy the tax and employment dividends they bring. The Shenzhen municipal government is essentially a large state-owned enterprise. It operates the huge industrial park in Shenzhen and provides incubation services for innovative enterprises in Shenzhen. For example, when BYD's electric vehicles had no market, Shenzhen forced taxis and buses to use BYD's products, which solved BYD's starting problem. After Huawei was sanctioned by the United States, Shenzhen's state-owned capital and private capital bought Huawei's non-core business, allowing Huawei to recover funds and survive the darkest moment. Huawei and BYD's land in Shenzhen is almost half sold and half given, at a very low cost. The Shenzhen municipal government also built schools, hospitals, and other infrastructure around large enterprises such as Huawei and BYD to facilitate the lives of employees. These measures are very rare in Shenzhen, where every inch of land is valuable. In China, there is no such thing as a few companies uniting to monopolize the market and earn high profits. If your product innovation is slow, you will be eliminated by the market and lose everything. Therefore, the speed of progress of Chinese companies is difficult for Western countries to understand. For example, China's electric vehicle industry is obviously in a monopoly advantage. But the Chinese government still acquiesces to the bloody price war between domestic electric vehicle companies and lets them decide the winner through market competition. When reporters asked Chinese officials that BYD excessively lowered the supplier's quotation, Chinese officials answered without thinking that this was a reasonable market behavior and there was nothing to be surprised about. Therefore, when Western companies face Chinese companies, they are often helpless and are driven out of the market in a panic. Because they have never experienced the fierce elimination competition in China and don't know how to fight a high-intensity battle. In fact, whether it is dismantling Huawei, BYD, or DJI products, Western companies will feel helpless. Because even if they are given design drawings, they cannot achieve the price of Chinese companies while ensuring quality. Even if they are given a list of suppliers and contact information, as long as their factories are not in Shenzhen, they cannot make such products. What makes them even more desperate is that their innovation and product quality are also falling behind. Chinese products are not only low-priced, but also better in performance than Western products. When Western companies face difficulties, 
it is difficult for their governments to provide them with strong help like the Shenzhen municipal government. So they use the term industrial tsunami to describe the industrial impact brought by Chinese companies. To be honest, the Chinese economy is also facing tremendous pressure in the drastic changes and fierce trade wars. This so-called industrial tsunami is likely to be China's last blow. But this blow is indeed powerful. If Western countries can withstand it, they can still compete with Chinese companies. If they lose, they will be marginalized in the distribution of the industrial chain in the future. And it is inevitable that China will dominate the global industrial chain division of labor.